my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Gen Con Online with Ross Thompson from The Op, and you brought us Friday the 13th at Camp <laughs> Crystal Lake. Make sure I get that whole title correct. <laughs> it's definitely a mouthful, right? It Ugh. is, yep. Jason returns for a romp across your board game table. He pretty much does. It's going to be neat. So, uh, first off, I'm glad to be here. Good to be a part of a Gen Con Online with Board Game Geek. Glad the Op Games can be a part of that. We have a lot of great stuff going on uh, for the Op as well. So, if people want to find out what's happening with us, you can go on the Op.Games. We've got panels, how to play videos, gameplay stuff going on. Our web shop is open. All kinds of cool things are happening. So, we're making sure that people can enjoy, hang out with us as much as we can uh, online. And so, be sure to check out the Op.Games for the Op at Home, everything going on there. But now we have Friday the 13th, uh, Horror at Camp Crystal Lake. Yes, it is definitely a whole mouthful. You have to say <laughs> while running from Jason, right? So, oh, yes, too. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, so with this game, it is super fun and scary and thrillery. Um, you are trying to thrillery. escape from Jason and one. get the most points, right? Yeah, so um, you're playing as the classic... Uh, trope uh, characters from the movies, right? So you're playing as the jock and the final girl, and oh, I've got them over here, right? And the partier, and the band kid, the nerd, all kinds of those different characters, right? And in this game, it's, it has that nice little jump scare bit to it. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be reaching into the, the bag each night, trying to get different items to help you uh, get what you need to fight off Jason and win. Um, so there's going to be things like keys, and a shovel, and gasoline, all different little things to help you get what you need to escape. Uh, the game goes over five different rounds. So it starts out with like the moon token there, and there's little Jason tokens that, so you know what's going on. Every character gets dealt five fear cards, uh, which are right there on the board, already set out. Thank you, Nikki. And then on those cards, we'll get to those in a little bit, but they're all pretty neat. So they've got, those are cards that you can play. We'll do it right now. We're all good. Um, there are cards that you can play to essentially kind of get players to go away from you. So you've got things like dodged him and what happened. Because as you're going to be pulling into the bag to pull out different tokens, uh, you can drop these Jason tokens. You want to get those. If you get two Jason tokens, you're attacked and you're done for the night or done for the round. So there's going to be a lot of cards you can play that allow you to uh, take those tokens and put them onto other players' boards, put them back into the tile, or there's cards that let you draw um, extra ones, and if you draw just one, you can put it back. So those are all those sphere cards are helpful, and as you, you draw more of those as each round goes on. Uh, along with that, you have these cool supply cards. That's the, the main deck there right next to the Camp Crystal Lake sign. And those are going to have all the different... Uh, uh, yeah, so you're going to have your supplies, right? So you're going to be going through, and each night you're going to have these things. Whoever is the first person to bring home Right there, I think it's a butcher's knife and gasoline, right? So if you're the first person to go back to camp and have those items, then you're going to have uh, an additional seven points. But the whole thing, though, is if you're the last person that can be out there each night with more of those tokens, then you can eventually get more points because now you've hung out longer. You can get the cool set matching you're doing. But at the same time, it's that, are you going to make it? What's going on? Because Jason's right there just waiting for you. So you kind of got to be careful when you push your luck to uh, get the right pieces that are going on. Yeah, and so along with that, you've got all these cool point uh, tokens there. They're right in the middle there where the ones and the five, the tens are. Those are all blood spattered. And up to each turn to the end of those, you're going to gather those as you're getting different pieces. On to the Camp Crystal Lake board, it tells you uh, all the different sets you've got to gather it and on your player sheet it has look at that so if you've got three of one item then you get additional two points and then as you go home each night you're going to have your plus cards or you're going to gain more things as you go home so when you return to cabin you get the bravery bonus and then um depending on which if you're the last person there you kind of get more stuff which is helpful because if you get more cards then you can mess with more players and essentially be the last person that is out there and then if we want we can on one of the player masks onto the visual there too. So there we have the diva, right? So as you're going through and scoring each night, you can look for these different sets. So if you have uh, three of each, you can get 
uh, two points as if you get uh, like a flush essentially and you've got one of each you can get extra points if you've got one of everything you can get 12 points but there's also a rarity so that supply value tells you kind of like what's going on how many points those are worth so there's certain ones you want to get more of and do those things so it has this nice kind of push your luck jump scare bit where you want to be the last one out there but at the same time you sometimes playing it safe is okay because as you get those points uh, but at the same time if you end up dying it gets pretty scary reaching into that bag and pulling out different stuff i i like how the the pieces have that nice plastic feel to them uh, i don't know if really we can hear the, the clink and all of that but they've got a nice heft to them as you're going going through and drawing out the different pieces but also at the same time if you do draw two jason tokens and you're done for the night then it gets really bad for you so. Uh, which I love that the mask is actually something that you can hold up like you just did, being like, sorry, I'm out. Right, totally, right? Yeah, so there's, and this, as we see there, all the, all the cool tokens that are going on, they have that nice kind of look to them, an extra little, that way you can't tell, are you going to grab a Jason token? Are you going to grab that frying pan? Are you getting that gasoline? Uh, what's going on? So this is, a, it's a really fun, uh, push your luck drawing different pieces, getting it going, and it's, it's going to be out uh, now. We announced today that it's available, which is super cool. So on July 31st or 13th, however you're going to change up those numbers. Uh, <laughs> 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 which, would be, now, yeah, which would be good. I would love if you would talk a little bit too, because this game is actually a re-implementation of Quartz. Um, it and is. I, I would love for you, yeah, th just to talk a little bit about how much a theme, or in this case, also an IP, can change the whole tone and, and thus the, the way you connect with the mechanics? So that's a great question. We love that we get to work with different co-brands and companies to kind of take an engine and put a new spin on it, right? Uh, with Quartz, our first dive into this engine was our Snow White and the Seven Dwarves mining game. And that one you're playing as the different dwarves and you're going out and getting all the different gems coming back to Snow White each day. And she's like, oh, I would like three gems and two diamonds, please. I'll bake you an extra pie. And you're like, oh, that's super great. <laughs> okay. And your board, uh, when you turn it back over, is the cottage, which is super cool. It has that nice, you know, classic Disney look to it. There aren't really a lot of games with Snow White, which is fun. And having the gems yeah. be the cool plastic pieces they were, it kind of lets you pull it in there. While at the same time, the dwarves have cards you can mess with and do different things. And then on the complete other boat now you take it to this horror theme with with <laughs> jason and friday the 13th um and it's interesting because you know it's a set collection push your luck drawing things out where but it has this thrill in this jump scare right because yeah. you're getting in the bag and you're trying to find oh my gosh if i just had one more gasoline i could get the bonus point and then i can come back to camp early and get that extra get that extra bonus and make it out but sometimes, oh my gosh, you're going to draw that Jason token, ah, and that's going to be a big freak out. So do you have the cards that can make it up, or do you have the cards that can play it around and kind of defend against other players? Because in those in those films, you know, there's even though we're all on the same team trying to get against Jason, there's all that teen angst that's going on, and you know, the jock in the in the band kit are fighting over what's going on, and then the party girl and the diva. Oh my gosh, it's just and the diva wanders crazy. off, and then. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, and that's it, right? So it's it's a nice way to play with the theme. One of the main things we like doing at the op is making sure that all the games tell a story, right? And, and that you're not, you're not just applying a license because you can, but making sure that the license helps tell the story of, of the game. It makes you feel and relive a lot of those moments. And for a lot of the horror games that we've done, whether it was it, Evil Below, or a couple other things, and now with Friday the 13th, it's being able to kind of recreate that. What feelings do we want to take and then have that go onto the table? And uh, with Friday the 13th, it's really that jump scare kind of look. The, also, the art is really fun, too. This is It's a 17 and up game, mainly because of the theme and how it looks. Everything is mm. blood splattered, uh, and everything has that, that color to it. So it's a nice way to kind of play around and, and uh, bring a, a Halloween dark scary game to the table without being too intense i could see somebody waiting for that opportune moment that when you're digging around in the bag and you pull things something out and you see that it's jason's mask there's somebody popping out of the closet being like ah! oh 100 it happens all the time too because you're just like oh my gosh i'm 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 
I'm behind by about 20 points, but if I get this one little thing, it'll be good to go. And there's some defense cards you can play uh, that like allow, like, hey, you, you're going to draw four or five tokens for me, Beth. And then of that, uh, you know, I don't get to keep any of the, of the adjacent tokens, but you totally do. So now you're going to have those. That's not on me, right? So it's like, kind of like I'm shoving you into the way and doing this different stuff. So just enough to kind of mess around and, uh, and, and do that. So we're really kind of jazzed that we can bring that um, those feelings from the different for the movies and that whole genre onto the table. You know, this is always a, a question I like to ask when we're talking about a game with an external IP. That do you feel like it enriches the game experience to have experienced that IP first? So in this case, one of the movies, or do you feel like the game is actually can be an introduction to itself and that the so funny enough, I don't like horror movies. I am not a scary movie guy. It is not my jam, which is very funny considering all the games we've come out with this year from Friday the 13th <laughs> and then The Shining and our big horror trivia stuff. So it's like, Ross, you're getting this deep dive into all these great horror stuff, you know, but which, which for me, like, I'm like, cool, we're doing it. I'm going to go immerse myself in it, right? And so, um, which has been fun. And so for the Friday the 13th movies, we all kind of, I think just being general, like people that consume pop culture, everyone knows who Freddy is. Everyone knows who Jason is. Everyone knows who all these yeah. different characters are from those different things. So even though we don't, you know, you didn't know who Darth Vader is from these different things, you still know that he's a villain because of just the pop culture mm. immersion that we are um, as people in our society, right? So one of the fun things about this game is that even if you haven't seen seen Friday the 13th in space or Friday the 13th the first one or how many they've done now in the whole series <laughs> right like you know that Jason is out to kill you that is that is gonna happen you know and, and you know that you are yeah you're a bunch of kids that are out of camp you shouldn't be there but you are there now and now you gotta run away you know it's just one of those things right so you need to get stuff to escape that so we we're able to kind of you, you squeeze it down and you're like which emotions and which theme points do we want to draw from those films and then put onto the table so being able to kind of apply that well what what about horror and especially in those movies mm. it's a lot of that oh my gosh they're going to be safe they're going to be safe and then all of a sudden you're just like ah that jump scare moment in which then that because it is a push your luck you're drawing things out of the bag for the mechanic where it's it's how does that work but it's like that anticipation is totally there and you're like oh my gosh yeah. I need this one thing I need to get it out and you're fighting against someone else it, it, it's a nice kind of a pure way to look at that that's a that's a really interesting way to think about it that how do you distill the feeling of maybe even that entire genre sort of that horror you know pulpy kind of uh to, to when you think of all the friday the 13th movies together how would you distill that down into a mechanic in a board game that might give you just that th that same feeling um and then the art and everything can bring the atmosphere along for the ride. But yeah, that's that's a really interesting thought experiment. Um, even if it's just something light, lighter and fluffier like Disney, that's still that st that question still applies. Totally. Like I, I we're not going to see a mashup with 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 Disney and Friday the Thirteenth. But you know, looking <laughs> at that as a <laughs> as a thing from there, you're like, well, what about like like for the different Disney games that we've done you know it's what about the disney character and what about the story in the game do we want to bring out you know so we, we, we've got uh disney munchkin coming out later this year right and so oh. that's going to be a fantastic mashup i'm super excited obviously i enjoy our munchkins right um <laughs> and everything there but it's going to be what about the disney characters do we want to bring to that how can we make that happen um so it's it's i mean we've it's one of these funny things where over the last couple of weeks I've sat on a couple panels with uh, designers from the op, like Pat Marino and Cami Mandel. We've worked with uh, outside designers too, like Sen and Jay, and talked with them all about, well, what about making a themed game? Like, how does that help? And it's been really nice sitting on a lot of these, well, not sitting, like moderating those panels, because I get to ask those same questions, and then they kind of come back with this. Yeah. Well, it's about the story that we're telling, right? And it's how do you, as I've kind of said, it's like, what moments really kind of, you know, embody that that movie or that or that film or that book 
or that even that fandom in general, right? Like, how does the fan, how do I, as a fan, um, interact with that license and that story? Like, what to me does it? And so it's cool that we can kind of figure around and play with that. A, a while ago, like licensed games, when you said that, it was kind of a dirty word, you know? But now over yeah. the years, we've seen a lot of really cool licensed games that have really changed that. And it's, does the license drive the game? Does the mechanic drive the game? Or was that nice kind of synergy that brings it together? And there's a lot of games now that, sure, I, I, we say that it's a license, but at the same time, it's just part of the game. You're like, like for our Scooby-Doo Cody Chronicles game, uh, that it's the perfect blend. Board Game Geek has had a great time playing yeah. that, right? And of course, you wouldn't see it any other way. You already know how Scooby and Freddy are going to interact, Velma are going to do, so that game literally just takes you along the story, uh, which is just a great way to experience it. Well, Ross, I appreciate you uh, sort of giving us a little taste about maybe what some of those panel discussions <laughs> were about, as well as also giving us a quick demo of what uh, Friday the 13th or at Camp Crystal Lake, what also looks like if you guys are interested in that or the in what uh, it's based on, which is Quartz. Um, Ross, thank you again. Have a wonderful Gen Con and uh, can't wait to talk to you again. Yes, thanks for having us on. Always good.